Hey there, this is Akshit Madan and welcome back to the third part of complete NumPy tutorial playlist. And in this video, we are again going to see the more advanced functions that are more important in this library, right? So without wasting more time, let's go to the main functions. And the first function that we are going to see is the most used function of NumPy that is np.arrange. And you have to see that it is not arrange, A-R-R-A-N-G, it is not arrange, it is arrange, right? So it basically takes three parameters that is start, command and it takes the step, right? So it's just like a, uh, you can see a for loop, right? So in for loop what we have to define, we have to give three parameters that is starting index, the ending index and the step we have to give and that was uh, not compulsory to give that step. Here also step is not compulsory to give, you have to give start and end, right? So the first thing, uh, what it takes, it takes start, that means one, and I'm giving it to 20 and step is default by one. It is default one, right? So when I'm going to print this, so what I'm doing np.a range one to 20. So it is going to print all the integers from one to 20 and it is going to skip 20. So as we were doing in for loop or list uh, indexes, it just skips the index that you have defined at the last, right? So it is going to take one index before 20, one number before 20, right? So this is the uh, use usage of np.a range, right? Now I'm going to define the step. So what I'm doing, 1 to 20 with a step of 2. So it is going to print all the odd numbers from 1 to 20, like this. Now I'm going to start from 2. That means it is going to print all the even numbers from 1 to 20, right? So let me run it. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 80. So this is the usage of np.arrange and this you are going to use almost in every data analysis, right? So this is also used when you need to give the axis for your matplotlib uh, plot, right? So you can use this thing, right? Now the next function that we are going to see is uh, arr.reshape, right? So this takes two parameters, rows, comma, columns, and it is going to take uh, array and it is going to reshape it, right? So let me use this a array that we have created above. So a is from, uh, at the last it is from even numbers, right? So this is my final a. And now I'm going to reshape it. I'm going to reshape it into three by three, right? So it is going as as now you can see it is one row. What is my a? Finally, a is a list of all the even numbers. So as you can see, there are nine columns and one row. But now I'm going to reshape it into three rows and three columns. Let me print it. So here, as you can see, my single array is converted into this array. So three rows and three columns. Perfect. So this is the usage of reshape. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to uh, use this reshape function into a bigger array, uh, with the bigger array, right? So what I'm printing, np.arrange, 1 to 100, all the odd numbers. So let me print it. And as you can see, it, uh, it is a very long one dimensional array, right? And now I'm going to reshape it into 10 rows and 5 columns. Let me show. So this is my array, 10 rows and 5 columns, right? Now the last thing we are going to see is the flatten and the variable functions, right? So flatten function, it basically converts your multidimensional array, or uh, sorry, uh, this, uh, it, it just a uh, inverse process of this thing, that is reshape, right? So it is finally going to give me a single dimensional array. That means one row and multiple columns. So let me run this. As you can see, my B was finally this 10 rows and five columns data, but now it is converted uh, back to one dimensional single, single row and multiple columns list. So it is a reverse process of this reshaping and Ravel, Ravel just do the same thing and but there is a difference between flatten and Ravel. So as you can see, my A was finally this uh, uh, three rows and three columns, but as you can see using Ravel, I converted back into a single row and multiple columns array, right? So flatten and Ravel inverses the process of reshaping. But what is the difference? Where do we use Ravel? Where do we use flatten? So this I have uh, written down for you. So basically, Revel returns only reference or view of the original array, right? So if you are modifying the array, you would notice that the value of the original array also changes, right? So I've lost my original array. It is also changed. Revel is faster than flatten as it does not occupy any memory because it is because it is uh, the memory that my original array was containing, right? So uh, not a, not new memory space is allocated to another array, right? Revel is a library level function, okay? Now flatten. Flatten just creates a copy of the original array. That means it is going to be a slower process because it is consuming memory and it does not modify your original array. It just creates a copy of the original array. 
that means original array is not affected so this is the advantage right so these were the difference between flatten and travel and i think this much is enough for this video and till the next content keep coding keep innovating and thanks a lot